got some conversations. Let me show you. We got some conversations. Let me show you. We got some conversations. We got some conversations. Let me show you. I got some conversations. Let me show you. I got some conversations. Let me show you. Young love out here in the streets, late night, fast cars, bright lights, hard drugs, long flights. I wouldn't change my past if I could, but fast sex had me misunderstood. But fast money had me misunderstood. But fast money don't leave the neighborhood. But my money trees branching out the seeds. Be truthful and blessed, baby, indeed. Sage and slow jams, let's get it on. But we only fucking know if your credit's strong. No more shade, but the Decepticons riding in my passenger until her magic's gone. You take it from my had it on. I rolled up these crushed flowers to pass along, so breathe deep and find love out of Babylon. And feel these rats in a battle song. Young love out here in the streets, late night, fast cars, bright lights, hard drugs, long flights. I wouldn't change my past if I could, but fast six and the sun still. Hi, this is Will Nunziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I am so excited to be speaking with the acclaimed artist Shalom Little today. Hello, Shalom. How are you? Peace, peace. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. I am doing well. Thank you, my friend, but doing so much better now that the audience got a little sneak peek of your talent. But Shalom, I want to know first and foremost, where were you born and when did you realize that you had an affinity for art and music? So I was born in Beth Israel Hospital in New York City. I love it. Born and bred New York. Same with me. But I was born in Brooklyn. But um, And when did you realize growing up that you had an affinity for music and art? Uh, well, I always was interested in my early years when I did live in New York. Um, I, I grew up in Crown Heights, so there was a lot of uh, hip hop, um, specifically on my block. The summer, the summer before I moved to Georgia, uh, MTV used to have uh, this show called The Grind. I don't know if people remember that, but they had like a summer block party on my block, and you know they had like Black Street. I want to say they had like Aaliyah. They, you know, they just had a real dope lineup, and that kind of like always left an impression they had the lady of rage it left an impression that you know that looked like something that I may want to participate in but it's really like once uh, I moved and relocated to the metro Atlanta area um in middle school is when I really got active into writing songs that's amazing I love the Atlanta area and um actually personally um, I was very good friends and actually working on a project on um, with an Atlanta artist. Her name was Duranis Pace of the Anointed Pace Sisters. Are you familiar at all with the Anointed Pace Sisters? Mm, they do gospel or something? Yep, they're a gospel group and incredible, incredible. And uh, I just remember how Duranis spoke so highly of Atlanta. Curious to know, obviously you're born and bred New York, but living in Atlanta, what would you say the main differences are in terms of the music scene? Oh uh, man, um, I done lived here many a lifetime and generations at this point. Um, if you comparing it to like back in the day when I first moved here, you know, Freaknik was still going on. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with that type of vibe. So, you know, there's a lot of like that Miami bass type music, but then, you know, you had people like Outkast and other people from the Dudgeon family, Goody Mob. And then from from the uh, from the Dungeon Family side, then you also had So So Deaf, but then you also had like other people from LaFace, you know, with the R and B as far as TLC, Usher, things like that, Monica. So at that time, it was really like Atlanta. I would say was definitely defining its initial roots in 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 black music and modern black music versus New York at that time have already been established in hip hop. I mean, it's the birthplace of hip hop. And you definitely seen like Wu-Tang, Nas, Bad Boy, all that stuff coming up at that time. Now, you know, Atlanta is considered Black Hollywood, Mecca Entertainment, all across the board. You, you know, bet, baby. I mean, look you know, at 
what Tyler, what Tyler Perry's done, but not only Tyler, but amazing, amazing African American men and women who are building studios and you know these compounds for creation is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I literally, uh, my neighborhood is literally across the street from Tyler Perry Studios. So. Stop it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's I live in. I live in this neighborhood uh, called Colonial Hills. It's in the city, uh, East Point. East Point is right next to Atlanta. So I live, you know, you literally you walk across the street, you back into the city of Atlanta and there go Tyler Perry Studios and stuff but on Fort McPherson. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, Shalom, listen, um, I, before I ask my final question, I want to let everyone know for more on the incredible Shalom Little, you can read more about him right below this video. Shalom, obviously, these past 18 months have been tough for all humans, but especially artists. I'm curious to know what you were able to do during this quarantine, not only creatively, but also what you're excited about in terms of maybe some things that you have been working on that you're excited to release. Um, yo, it's been, I literally was just talking about that with one of my associates. Uh, it was crazy. So, you know, along with creating music of my own, I also curate a platform that's called All Rapidy Raps. It's um, it's a basically a platform, a multi-dimensional platform for artists and creatives to exploit their content. We started off by doing live shows. We were doing that all 2019, early 2020. Then, as you mentioned, you know, things change. Um, from there, I start transitioning into doing um a lot of stuff on social media live. So either Facebook live, uh, IG live, whether that be digital concerts, that was kind of interesting. Um, but that transferred more into like doing a lot more pre-recorded, thought it out performances, videos. You know, YouTube is popular, but I think some people can tell my age, I'm past my 20s, I'm in my 30s. So, you know, as I was telling you about MTV, the grind, I come from an era of MTV, BT, you know, before YouTube. Yeah, uh, where me and you both were probably around the same age. I mean, that was my jam, so I hear you. Right, so the visual, the visual was very important. That's how you kind of establish the connection with your artist. So in a way, it's kind of come back I agree. Circle. I think that people have looked back to look forward, especially now with these visualizers and, you know, these quick little snaps that people get on TikTok, Instagram, right. Facebook. People only have a few seconds. It's all about the visual brand. Right. So that's definitely been more of the shift. Uh, now that, you know, as, as, as they say, the world is opening back up, you know, we are beginning to do more live performances so it's definitely uh, more of an effort to fuse the two, continue creating quality visual content, continue creating safe and positive spaces for people to perform, and also the merge the two. You know, you have Twitch, you have all these other platforms, YouTube, of course, that getting to the streaming, you know what I'm saying? Live streaming as well, you know what I mean? So listen, Shalom, this is why I'm this is why I'm most excited about Phoenix, that not only are they gonna be allowing artists to put all of their socials in one place so it's kind of one stop shopping, but Phoenix right. is gonna have their own live stream. So that so whatever the artist wants to charge people, that revenue finally goes directly into their pocket and not, you know, randomly all over the place to these major streamers where, you know, people have to beg via Venmo or a fraction of a penny, you know what I'm saying? Like most of these streaming platforms, they don't really compensate no. the artists, the people who actually create no. the way that they make their money, you know what I'm in, saying? In Shalom, it's like during this time when everyone was locked up, everyone's like, everyone's always, oh, the artists, oh, they don't deserve money, but it's like, how do wow. you think you survived the pandemic? It's like, you were watching Netflix, Amazon, listening to music. Artists were the ones that kept the world go round. And now Phoenix, that's why I freaking love these CEOs are now dear, dear friends. Their life's mission is to put the artists first and put the power back in the artist's hands. Indeed. And so listen, my friend, I'm so excited that 
you're joining and I'm so grateful to have gotten to meet you and uh, I'm glad that we're Likewise. connecting now too, Shalom. Likewise, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the platform expands, you know what I'm saying? Um, recently setting up my own profile and really seeing the options is very interactive. So uh, I'm looking forward to see how I can expand on that interaction with my um, my supporters. So. God bless Shalom. Absolutely. Well, it was so nice speaking with you and thank you for your time today. Likewise, man. Stay blessed. You too.